welcome back now it is time for us to do hands on on both for loops as well as the while loops i opened the jupyter notebook and i've shared it across i hope you also have opened your notebook and you are going to try things hands on with me so i'll start with the for loop what we stated in the last topic i mentioned that the index starts with zero it's all zero index loops so it starts with zero for i in range 10 print of i when i say what do you think the outcome will be it's going to start with zero and it's printing up to nine that is the range is 10 so automatically we have 10 different items in the list that's going to get published so since the index starts with zero it is printing zero to nine so I hope you have understood why we are saying it's a zero index stat. Now let's look at for loop for numbers. How can we concatenate even and odd numbers from a string of numbers? Let's look at that. I have a number defined. 1, 2, 5, 3, a random number as you can see on the screen. Even and odd, I would like to just keep adding those numbers in this. Now remember this numbers is actually a string. String means it's an array of characters. It has a list which has multiple characters in it. Now I'm executing the for loop to see and check for every character whether it is number. That number is odd or even. So I'm executing for num in numbers. And if integer number, that is since I'm taking a string, and then character by character, I'm passing it across in the for loop. I'm doing an explicit type casting. If you remember that, we studied this couple of topics back. Implicit and explicit type casting. I'm doing explicit type casting here. Integer number of percentage two. That is, I'm converting num. Let's say one is passed across. I'm converting that one character into integer and then doing a percentage. I told you earlier percentage is nothing but the modulus. We studied this in the operators one. So it is taking the remainder. If the remainder is zero, that means it is even. If the remainder is not zero, it is going to be odd. Now, depending on whether it is even or odd, you are just adding those numbers in the even list. Okay, you are concatenating all even numbers in even by saying even plus equal to num which is nothing but even is equal to even plus num. So I'm printing it and I'm getting the outcome. What do you think the outcome will be? Let's check this out. When I execute this, I've got all evens here, as you can see on the screen, two, six, eight, four, two, eight, 242680. All the even numbers are concatenated and put across in one particular string, and that string is printed. Same way, all the odd numbers are concatenated and they are put across in odd. Now, are you able to understand how the for loop is used? And we are taking a character, we are taking a string, and we are looking at each and every character in the string with the help of for loop. And this is what is helping us to take character by character, assess and convert them to string, from string to number. And then we are looking at it, whether it is an even number or an odd number with explicit typecasting. Now let's move on. If I have to use for loop for strings, how is it going to work? Let's take a simple string, twinkle, twinkle, little star. For every letter in string, I want to print it. Remember, this is pretty similar to our last exercise. I've taken a string. It's an array of characters. For every character, I am printing it. So what do you expect here? As you can see on the screen, every letter is taken. And in the loop, it is going through that particular string. And the whole string is printed. Yo, I hope you have understood how this for loop works. Now, nested for loop. I told you nested for loop is multiple for loops, especially when you have multiple dimensions, 
automatically are you going to use nested for loops. Now, as you can see on the screen, I'm saying for i in range 11 and for j in range i, I'm taking a nested loop here because I have two dimensions, i and j. And I'm trying to print i and try to see how the row is going to be executed. So let me execute this. You can see this for every character I am getting multiple sequences. So for every i, j is getting printed. So it's getting into a nested loop. That's the reason you're seeing such type of numbers printed again and again because the print is within that loop statement. So depending on where you are putting across the print, you are able to see how that loop is executed. And it has consciously been written this way so that you understand how the loop is getting executed. Moving on, you can use range. This is something we discussed. Using range for a different step of three in iterations. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm going to use a for loop for i in range 1, 30, 3. I say that the range is between 1 and 30, but I'm going to use this in a kind of step format. That is for every third number. Skip three, two numbers and then go to the third one. That's what I'm trying to say in the name of different step of three. By default, the step is one. If you don't mention it, if you consciously mention the step, like here, for example, three, it's going to do the looping in terms of three. So let's execute it and see how the outcome comes out. As you can see here, it starts from one and it completes well before 30. 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28. Do you see the step of 3 here? That's what you can achieve with this range value. Moving on for loops for list. So list is something that you're going to learn down the lane as a data structure. But to begin with, a list is something where you can store any type of variable. It's a data structure. Okay. You can see number, you can see strings that can be put across. So in a list one, I'm saying multiple different variables are put across one, two, five, hello, ABC. Now when I print this, what will be the outcome? As you can see, it iterates every item in that particular list and it prints that since the print is kept inside the for loop. This is how the for loop for list work. Now check this one. I want you to try this by yourself. Objective one and objective two, read this out very clearly. Understand how this is getting executed. I'm going to give this piece of code. I do not want to execute this here in the session, but I want you to try this out and explore how this is done. Moving on, I'm going to dictionary. Dictionary is another data type where I say that I'm going to have a key value pair kind of. I say, for example, look at this one. Player 1 colon Rohit Sharma comma 103. 2 colon Virat Kohli comma 56. 3 colon Shikhar Dhawan comma 78. 4 colon Ajinkya Ravane comma 91. I have four values here. And I'm clearly indexing them 1, 2, 3, 4. And for each key value pair here in this one, I can run the loop and I can check out what values are stored there. As you can see, I have written the code like for key comma val in player dot item. So this player is the list that you have defined here. I'm going to take it item wise and I'm going to execute that and I'm going to get this key value pair printed. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the corresponding values are printed. So 1 Rohit Sharma, 2 Virat Kohli, 3 Shikhar Dhawan, 4 Ajinkya Ravane is printed. In fact, you can also print the keys alone. So I can instead of saying items, if I use keys, you can see the previous one I mentioned player.items. I'm using player.keys here. What will happen if I use this player.keys? It's just going to print the key alone, not the value. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is the key. The value here is 
Rohit Sharma, comma one of three is the value. Now, if I have to print values, let's check that out. As I mentioned, it just prints the values, not the keys. Now, can you count the number of players who have scored runs less than 100? Because the, what you have stored in players is you have got the player name and the corresponding score. Now I want to identify the players who have scored less than 100. Is it possible? Yes. I am combining two different concepts here. The for loops that you have learned in the last topic and the if loop or if conditional statement that you learned earlier. So check out the code. For count is equal to zero. For key value in player items, just like how we have written earlier, if value of 1 is less than 100, remember value of 1, not 0. If value of 0 is given, it would return the name like Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, Ajinkya Rayani. If I say variable of 1, value of 1, it talks about the second one. That's where the score is stored, isn't it? Now when that value of 1 is less than 100, then count that. Because I just need the count, I do not want to know the person. If I want to know the person, I can print the person also directly here, isn't it? So count plus equal to 1 and I'm printing the count. Let's see how many players are going to come up. What is your expectation? The value should be 3, isn't it? Because Virat Kohli, Shikhar and Ajinkya, all three of them have got scores less than 100. Let's execute this. As expected, the answer is 3.